scripture reading this morning is found on Pew Bible, page 1188. It is Hebrews 7, 25 through 27. Hebrews 7, 25 through 27, Pew Bible, page 1188. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest need, meets our needs, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. November 21st, 1980 was a horrible day in Las Vegas, Nevada at the MGM Grand Hotel. 80 people died in a fast moving fire. They were stranded on the balconies, on the ninth floor and up. Some of them were waving, waiting for help. Some of them couldn't wait any longer, jumped to their deaths, hoping to avoid the flames and maybe they would live. But unfortunately, they didn't. The firefighters that responded were well trained. They did everything they could to save those that were in that hotel risking their own lives, but they had a problem. Even with their ladders stretched out as far as possible and their hoses set on maximum, they still couldn't reach above the eighth floor. They couldn't save anybody on the ninth floor and up. Marvin just read to you from Hebrews 7.25 that God is able to save completely. He is not lacking. He has what we need. In fact, if you have a King James Bible, it says that he is able to save to the uttermost. You know any uttermost kind of people that need saved? Murderers, child molesters, abusers, thieves, cheaters, alcoholics, liars. Able to save even them. And though it pains me deeply to say this, even somebody like Ben Roethlisberger, who is uh, experiencing and suffering the consequences of the backlash of his behavior, and some of the Steeler faithful are now calling him Ben Rapist Pervert. Even able to save ben Osama Bin Laden, and even able to save you. Now why do I put you with Ben Roethlisberger and Osama Bin Laden and all those other people? It's very simple. There are no levels of righteousness at the foot of the cross. Here at our cross, we've got a couple of levels leading up to it. It's not like that at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. The ground is level. All have sinned and fallen far short of the glory of God. Everyone needs to be saved. We've all turned our own way, every one of us. And Jesus is able to save completely to the uttermost. And there's a reason for that. He has the power to do it because sin could not hold him and he was resurrected from the dead. We just celebrated it about a month ago on Easter Sunday. You and I have all sinned, fallen far short of the glory of God. Jesus never did. And so death could not hold him. Had no power over him. We have the ability to tap into that power through our repentance. This uh, coming Saturday, we're going to have a breakfast, pancakes and sausage. And just so you know, you will have the opportunity over top of those pancakes to pour 100% pure, real maple syrup. Anybody know how you get real maple syrup? You take taps into the tree, hang a bucket. For every 
50, 60, 70 gallons of sap that you get, you boil it down, you can get a gallon of syrup. The minimal price on a gallon of syrup is $40 a gallon. Aren't you glad your car doesn't run on maple syrup? Some people are getting almost double that. The way you get it is you tap the tree. It's inside, you gotta put a tap in, you get the sap out, make the syrup. The way to tap into the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is through repentance, which simply means saying you're sorry, switching the direction of which you're going. Here's an example. I'm going this way. When I repent, I go this way. Now, I've used this example many times. I've been your pastor here 17 years. You've seen me do that many times. I want to do this this morning and make a slight modification. Repentance. I'm going this way. I repent. I change my mind. I'm going this way. But you know what? Sometimes I get off track, and so I need to make a course correction. Sometimes my priorities get wrong, and so I need to make a course correction. When you repent and begin to follow Jesus, you are not going to do it perfectly in a straight line the rest of your life. You're going to need to make course corrections occasionally. But you keep your sights set on the goal. I'd like to give you some biblical examples of people who repented. One was Manasseh, king of Judah. He reigned over Judah for 55 years. Let me tell you what kind of guy Manasseh was. He burned his own children alive. Nice. He practiced witchcraft and sorcery. He built altars to pagan gods. God finally lost his patience with Manasseh, and he sent the Assyrian army as punishment to attack his kingdom. And they put meat hooks into him and drug him back to Babylon. Now, as depraved and far away from God as he was, he finally realized that he needed to change. He repented. He prayed for forgiveness. God not only forgave him, but he also restored his kingdom to him. Then there was Mary Magdalene. Jesus expelled seven demons from her. She repented, and she was honored by being the first one to see Jesus alive after the resurrection. There were two thieves hanging on the cross beside Jesus. One of them repented. And Jesus said to him, Today you'll be with me in paradise. There were all kinds of uh, folks in the Corinthian church, in fact, I want to read this to you, who made changes and repented. If you like to read along, you need to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, page 1131, if you're using a pew Bible. I'll get you there quick. The Corinthian church, and Paul writes this to them, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 9. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what some of you were. But you are what? You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord.